Hi everyone, this is a complete freebie video tutorial. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that I think some may find very valuable. Now before I get into this technique, I do want to let you know that I am creating a brand new video tutorial that is going to somewhat exhaustively show people all that can be done with the layer style blending options, blend if. I've been an advocate for blend if for many years for a variety of reasons. I started out using different kinds of luminosity masks. I used to create my own. I've used other people's luminosity masks. But as soon as I started realizing how blend if worked, Photoshop, and I read the article that was in Photoshop User Magazine in which one of the top Photoshop teachers in the world said, the layer style blending options are some of the most powerful yet underutilized tools in all of Photoshop. That really got my attention. I remember playing with them and finding them maybe a little bit helpful, but once I wrapped my mind around how they worked, I realized so many things could be done with them. One of the things that I loved about Blendif was that it is a lossless technique in Photoshop. The other thing that I absolutely love about Blendif is that you get to see the results in free form, flexible time. And you're gonna see this here. And they're simple. Once you get your mind wrapped around what they actually do, they're quite simple. Now this is not going to be a tutorial about layer style blending options. It's just going to be one technique so that you can see that they can be used even for intricate selections, maybe in most cases. Here's a photo that I was working on the other day. This was before I finished it. In fact, this is before I went and redid the entire image with almost the same results but improved a bit. And let me show you how quickly and how powerfully the layer style blend if options can solve a problem that I was seeing in this image. Because of my default settings in Lightroom or Camera Raw, which is the same thing as Lightroom, by the way, same algorithms, sometimes I will get haloing around edges. You may or may not notice this little bit of haloing, or it could even look natural to you to where you wouldn't recognize it as haloing, but I see it as haloing over here. It's darkness going to light just before the black trees that are almost silhouetted. So what I would like to do is I would like to grab these trees. Most people would just use a luminosity mask, some kind of incremental luminosity mask, and then they could work on the tones that are behind the trees. But I just want to show you really quickly that the layer style blending options would be an awesome option as well. Sometimes it's not either or, but it's learn all the tools. And then when you get a good handle on a variety of tools, you'll find one works better for certain things or another one works better for other things, or you just prefer a certain tool. I like to learn it all and then every image presents different problems and then I can draw from a wide variety of tools to get the need met the best possible way. So I'm going to go ahead, click on the image, command J or control J if you were PC, I am Mac. We've duplicated and you have to have a duplicate layer to use Blendif. I'm going to double click here and the layer style blending options comes up. What you want to ignore is every single thing in this entire box with the exception of this one gradation bar. These numbers and these two points and the OK button. Everything else you can totally ignore. Again, for those who don't know anything about the layer style blending options, this could be a little bit over your head. You might want to buy my video tutorial on that or Wait for my new one coming out. My new one coming out will not be a revision. It's going to be a completely overhauled brand new video that nearly exhaustively shows you everything that can be done with the layer style blending options, such as fall off for grain simulation, fall off for sharpening, middle tone contrast, 
intricate masking, controlling Orton glow or dream effects in specific tonalities, advanced dodging, advanced burning, and so much more. What I will tell you right now is we have the top layer that's a duplicate of the background. We have it highlighted, so we're working on that. Double click either here or on the image and layer style blending options come up. You can find it under layer and there's the pull down menu and it's more complicated to find it that way. When you grab this slider right here, this little pin or node and you move it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna eliminate the tones that you move it over from this image. And you can see obviously pure white is right here, the pin is pointing at pure white. And in a way, it's sort of just outside of pure white because right now, the way it works, if it was pointing at pure white, that means 255 would be disappearing from the top image, but it's not. All tones are there until you start sliding these. Same thing with zero. Zero is not zero. Zero is actually pure black in the digital world. So this pin pointing at pure black or pointing at zero, that's why it says zero, would mean that it's omitting zero from this top layer. And there's some pure black in this image and it's not omitting it. So it is off by one number. Now, don't even worry about that unless you are a mathematical literalist. So to give you an example, Let's turn off the eyeball of the layer below. That means you can't see it. So if I erase on this image, what am I gonna see? I'm gonna see little squares. I'm gonna see these squares. Now both are off. This grid is to tell you nothing exists. You're not seeing anything. So here's the top image, the bottom image. The eyeball is turned off so you can't see it. And if I took the move tool and I just moved this, well, you can't see the image below it. If I turn back on the image, then you are now seeing this image below. Why do you need to know that? If you didn't know that already, it's because I'm turning off the eyeball of the image below. Again, I'll move it out of the way so you can see that's behind it. The squares are behind this image. This is on top. If I took an eraser tool, hard brush at 100% opacity, erased. Why are we seeing checker boxes? Because that is what is behind this image. Now, if I turn this eyeball back on, you would see the image behind it. It's the same exact image, so it looks like it's healing it or something. But you can see right here, there's all this eraser right there. It's disappeared. Now that you get that, and with the layer style blending options video tutorial that I have out and the one that I'm gonna make, you're gonna see this in much more precision explaining how it works. But you just take the slider and you slide it over and what's happening? All of these tones from here to the pointer, here to the pointer, have been omitted. You are deleting them completely and entirely from the top layer. This icon turns on because it's telling you the layer style blending options, blend if sliders are being used. That's what that icon is. Let's go back here again. Let's move it to one. I don't see anything happening to this image, although there could be some missing pixels. This is a 42 megapixel image, so I might not see it. Let's just move it a little ways. There we go. You see these little holes? Those are holes in the image. How you would read this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six are now missing, maybe even seven, but it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, have been omitted from the top layer. That's why it's disappearing. 
And if you took the white slider, see, these are the light tones. I don't know if there's anything pure white in this image. Let's look at the histogram. Nope, see, there's a gap there. So there's no pure white. You're gonna have to move it a little ways before anything disappears. But let's move it that little ways. And then what's happening? The bright areas are disappearing from the image. And look, what happens if I keep pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it? Hey, see the trees? Remember, I want to burn down or darken the haloing that's behind these trees. By the way, a little freebie. The whole thing's a freebie, but here's another freebie. Often, I will just go filter, camera, raw, filter. And what I will do is go to the area where the haloing is and simply grab a brush and then use what I call anti-clarity all the way to the left. Make sure everything is zeroed out. And then often what I'll do is I will just paint halos out. That often removes halos. On this image, I already did it and I still see some haloing back there. That's just a little tip you might want to try. If you see a little bit of haloing on your image, just run some anti-clarity on it. Don't run it all over the image, but just where the halos are, you can see them often disappear. If I want to create a luminosity mask type of effect in real time, all I have to do is turn this eyeball off, click into Blend If, and basically omit all the light tones down to the point where see they start disappearing from the trees see there's a difference in tonality between the trees and the darkness behind it and it's right about here and you can see in flexible free time when everything disappears now how you create a little bit of a feather effect so that it's not a hard edge from what's omitted and what is kept. See, everything that's omitted is 100% omitted. Everything that is kept or is opaque is 100% opaque. So 100% transparent, 100% opaque. To create a little bit of a feather zone, you split these sliders. So you get a little bit more of a natural effect. And I'm just watching these trees, by the way, I'm really watching this big tree mostly right here. I'm wanting to get rid of those tones. Or see, they're coming in there. I'm trying to get rid of those tones. And I'm trying to get these sliders just in the right place, to, just to the point where it fades off, like right about there. And then how about this? I want as much tree in it as possible. I don't want to omit the tree. So just to the point where it disappears like that. And there you go. I could have done that in about three, four, five seconds. Now I do see a little bit of sky right here. The cool thing about layer style blending options is you can double click again, go back to them and readjust them. They are free form flexible. So I'm gonna pull this back a little bit further to that cloud disappears completely. There we go. I'm going to keep a little feather. Now, for some people it may make no sense, but what have I done? I've created a luminosity mask basically. Based on luminosity, I have omitted all of the upper highlights down through the middle tones down to the shadows very specifically with a feather exactly the way I wanted it omitted. So since it's omitted from this image, let's go ahead and turn this image back on. That will fill it all back in again. Everything that was omitted is now filled in. Now, let's get a visual of what we have done. I'm on the top layer, let's move it. See, it's like a transparent layer. Those pixels have disappeared. So the sky in the background, the blue back there, that blue back there is on the bottom image. I want to darken that blue. And I don't mind if it even desaturates a little bit. If you don't want it to desaturate, 
you want to duplicate the layer and put it in luminosity mode. That way it will darken, but it won't get less saturated. In your standard regular mode in RGB, when you darken something, it gets less saturated. When you brighten something up, it gets more saturated. A lot of people don't even know that. But in this case, I'm gonna go back one history state, Command Z. I am not going to duplicate this layer and put it in luminosity mode because I actually want, when these blues get darker, when the sky back here gets darker, I also want them to be a little bit less saturated. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use the burn tool. And I am gonna choose middle tones, although those are kind of dark middle tones. I think you could get away with choosing shadows as well. And let's see what happens with an exposure of 100. That means very powerful burn. I'm gonna run that. Remember, I'm on the bottom layer now. It's not gonna affect the trees. There's a burn. There you go. That's too strong though. So I'm gonna pull back, make it maybe 30 or 40%. And I'm gonna run it across here. Actually, it might be desaturating too much. It is. So I think I'm gonna desaturate it later. I went back to my history states, command option Z or control alt Z, or you can go to your history palette and you can do it, pull it back that way. So change my mind, duplicate, put it in luminosity mode so that colors don't change. Then I'm gonna take the burn tool I'm gonna go ahead and make this brush kind of small. It's a soft brush. If you right click in your image, you can choose your size, type of brush, whatever, and how soft or hard it is. And then up here, you choose the exposure, which is basically the opacity, how strong you want it to work. So I'm gonna go into the 20-ish zone and I'm gonna run it across here. And then I'm gonna run it across a second time. And maybe one more there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and merge these two down together. So layer, merge down, which to me is a command E. That might be a custom shortcut. I'm not sure if I made that or not. Remember, we still have the trees on the top. So now what I can do is duplicate this layer one more time. This time I'm gonna put it in color mode. This may go over some people's heads, but now only color can be affected. So if I go and I take like the sponge tool, sponge tool allows you to desaturate or saturate areas of your photo. So I'm gonna choose desaturate and let's just go ahead and try a flow of 30%. I don't like that extra blue there, but I wanna control it. When I was burning it, it was getting too desaturated. So I'm gonna run this across. That looks pretty darn good. Maybe a little bit too much. I'm gonna go back, try one more. Again, I did a Control Alt Z. Let's run it across once. And then I think right here for some reason, I wanna do it one more time. Now, I'm going to merge those two down. Remember, Command E or go to Layer and then Merge Down. In fact, I can even flatten this file now. What I should have done is left a layer at the very bottom and another extra layer so that we could compare all of this. But I'll do a weird workaround. Select all, make a copy, command A, then command C, make a copy. This is just to show you how this works. And then go back in my history states, command option Z, 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 Z. I'm gonna go back to before I did all of that, before I did everything. There we go, that's the beginning before we did anything. Now I'm gonna do a command V as in victory, that is paste. It's a universal command for paste. And do you see how it burned those areas but did not touch the trees? It may look like it, but it didn't. Those tones and those trees are exactly the same. What I like about having a layer on top of a layer like I said, I should have had an extra background layer at the very bottom so that I could have merged those down but had the before layer at the very, very bottom that you don't touch at all. 
is now I can control that burn of the halos by going up and down with my opacity. What I do is highlight the number and I go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 points, and I find where it looks its most natural. What I feel like is it overdid, but you obviously see the halo now. And something like around there is so, so, so much more natural looking. If you want to save all your layers, you can do a stamp layer and move on, control alt shift E, or if you want to flatten and go, I'm gonna flatten and then I would move forward. So you can use the layer style blending options. That was just a quick example of how you can use them just like a luminosity mask. So much more to teach, so much more to show with that. If you're interested, keep an eye out for my new video tutorial coming out. And my goal is to knock it out of the ballpark and it be the very best video tutorial on the market for nature landscape photographers and others, but especially nature and landscape photographers on how to use the layer style blending options and exhaustively or nearly exhaustively all the things you can do with them. On to the next technique. Okay, so here is an image and I change my lens or lenses many, many, many times in the field. And before this year, I was spending 300 to maybe 310 days a year shooting and leading workshops. So once in a while, I'll blow the dust off my sensor. I never have it cleaned because it's just going to be dirty in a day. It's a workhorse camera, workhorse lenses, and thus I get lots of dust specks on my sensor. In this image, in Lightroom, in RAW, I got it as good as I could. I brought it into Photoshop. I actually used the layer style blending options to deal with a little bit of tonal issues that I was having, easy fix. And I did get rid of most of the dust specks, at least I thought, in RAW. When I do that, and these images are going to be a big enlargement, I still go all the way up to 100%. I look around and I see if there's any indication of the dust specks that I have eliminated in RAW because the RAW dust speck removal tool does sometimes leave indications that it's been used. In this case, I saw a few extra dust specks and I see a few right now and I was like, oh, well, there's some that I missed. So I've got this really awesome technique that I teach people how to remove distracting elements from an image. And I'm gonna show that to you as well and how to get rid of more dust specks. And then basically I just go to the quick mask. I take a brush tool I make the opacity 100%. I make the brush 100% hard, and it has to be 100% opaque or it will not work. And I zoom up on the image and I look for those dust specks, and I can see a couple left here. Okay, I barely see it, but right there, I think there's one, there's one right there. I know there's one right there, I see that one. So I do this. But many images, there will be dust specks that you can't even see, but they're there. And if you make a really big enlargement, they very well may become apparent. Let me show you also that this technique can do things like remove, here's some duplications because I worked on some water, some duplications there. You can get rid of some distracting elements. If you thought that was distracting, maybe if you can see this on your monitor, some of these rocks back here. So you just basically paint on them. When you click off of the quick mask, you will have, which I don't have, an inverse selection. So you have to flip it, you have to inverse it. But if you double click on your quick mask options, 
and you move it from masked areas and you select this one, selected areas, and then you hit OK. Then when you click off of the quick mask, it will be the very spots that you painted. That's the way you want it set up. Now let's get to the technique. I'm going to deselect, Command D. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate a couple times. Just in case we need another extra one on the bottom. So what am I going to do? Well, I know for a fact that Clarity and D Haze, which are middle tone contrast sliders that are in RAW, Lightroom, Camera RAW, and other raw converters that are sort of mimicking what Adobe has pioneered. So I'm gonna go filter, camera raw filter. And what I'm gonna do is, let's, do, let's go to clarity for a second. Yeah, it's working okay. My first impulse was to go to dehaze. Oh yeah. Check this out. Do you see any dust specks? What we are doing is we are drawing out dust specks that we otherwise would not have been able to see with the eye. Very important on a variety of types of photos, especially these soft photos or low key photos. Look at that. Now that's appalling. That's very appalling and it makes me want to clean my sensor. <laughs> when I get done with this video, I'm going to go ahead and clean my sensor off. This is disgusting. But can you imagine how many dust specks can be on a sensor and you wouldn't even know it? So hit OK. Now why am I doing that? I'm ruining my photo. I'm adding way too much contrast. It's just destroying it destroying the look that I wanted. Well, because now I can go to quick mask, the brush, hard brush, 100%. Absolutely remember to use 100% opacity. I'm gonna click outside the photo. Now you can go up here and go to work. Oh, this is a lot of work. And this is what I did with my final version and maybe play some good music maybe drink a glass of wine if that's what you're into but you see now we can get rid of dust specks that there's no way that the eye could have seen they usually camouflage themselves in detailed areas of photos. So they're in there, but you cannot see them because of the nature of the detail. But look at all of these. But you may be thinking, well, you know, you're getting rid of dust specks, but you're attempting to get rid of them on this image that you've ruined by using way too much dehaze. Not so. And I'll show you why. I'm not going to get them all. I just want to get some of them so I can show you. But you obviously now have seen that. See, why don't I see any over here? They're there. It's just because the nature of the detail completely camouflages them. You can't see them over there. But certainly in this white area. So look at all of those. Now, click off the quick mask and hopefully you set up yours like mine so I don't have to inverse it, inverse it. If you want to inverse it, it's select inverse. See, that inverses it. That's what it usually would look like. It's grabbing everything but what you painted and you would have to physically inverse it. So what do you have? You have a selection. By the way, I can't have the background on this. This has to be on a flattened layer. You cannot do this on a non-flattened layer. Hey everyone, I just wanted to let you know that since this video's original making, I quickly found the content aware fill command, which is under edit fill. And you can create a custom shortcut if you'd like for it. And then you can do it on a layer and you don't have to do it the way as described here. You could flatten all your layers, copy it, 
open up a new document, paste it in, flatten it, then do it, then copy that, paste it back in. That's one workaround. The other workaround would be do this at the beginning of your Photoshop workflow. So let me go ahead and get rid of this one. And let's get rid of this one. There we go. Now, see all of those? Let me just do something. View, a lot of people don't know that you can do this. Show, selection edges. Let's turn it off. <sighs> Except for a few of them, I do not see all of those. I see maybe 10% of those. But, view, by the way, viewing, we still have the selection there. You just can't see the selection. You don't see the marching ants. This basically turns off the marching ants so you can't see them, but the selection is still there. You have to remember it's still there. And there it is, it's back. Look at all of those. And we didn't even get them all. So now, remember I told you about duplication. If you wanted to fix some of the water, this is my version that was not completely finished but you can hit delete. And one of the options here should be your default option is content aware. Hit okay. And it will fill in all of those holes. Get rid of all of those specs. Now what I do, it's kind of a funky workaround, but I select all afterward. I make sure that I see the marching ants all the way around the image means I know I have a selection of the entire image. I do controller command C and I do that a couple of times just to make sure I really have it. Then what I do is a command option or control alt for PC and I go Z, Z. I go back to before the delete, okay? And then I paste command V. And then what you're going to have is a before and after. And if you zoom up on here, you'll actually see, I'm seeing some of them. Some of them are hard to see, but I'm seeing before, like right here. See this right here? After, for, after. They're all disappearing. Before, after, for, after. Not seeing a big difference, and you're seeing a compressed version, so you're not seeing it as well, but I am definitely seeing those all disappear. So there you go. In clouds, in low key areas, add a contrast layer, punch up the contrast using dehaze, have only two layers going on at the same time, go into quick mask, have a hard brush at 100% opacity, Circles work better for that algorithm or round things instead of grabbing it with like say the lasso tool where it could be a little bit jaggedy. The roundness helps the algorithm work better even for distracting elements in an image. Add the contrast, find all of your problem areas, turn off your quick mask, take that layer that was over contrasted throw it down into the garbage can. The selection will remain on the background. Then hit delete and use content aware delete and boom, it'll all be gone. Now, having said that, let me show you one last thing. By the way, I do like the newer versions of Photoshop. We'll show you that quick mask is on. When quick mask is on, a lot of tools will not work. And in previous versions, there was no indication that quick mask was on, except for that it said quick mask up at the name of your image. And sometimes you'd be like, why isn't this working? And you'd be calling your friend, your Photoshop expert friend, this tool's not working. And they'd be like, I don't know why. If they really knew, they'd be like, well, do you have your quick mask on? Now we know we have our quick mask on because it's turned red here, so that's cool. But anyway, you can just get rid of things, duplications, things that you just don't like, whatever, specs, whatever, and turn it off, hit delete, hit enter. If you wanna see the before and after, it's a funky workaround. It's not the most intuitive thing in the world. 
but select all, make a copy, go back in your history states, command option Z and Z. See, everything has gone back to where it was. Now paste, command V, and you will see, like look down here at the bottom right hand corner right here, and app before and after. I hope that helps some of you out there. Thank you so much for your support. At the moment, I have over 25 video tutorials in my head to make. Just keep an eye out and great light to you.